Hi, my name is Stem Tang from Hughes, and we are coming to you from the Restaurant Franchise Innovation Summit 2018 in Louisville, Kentucky. I have the privilege of speaking with Davin Acker of Pizza Inn. Davin, can you tell us a little bit about your roles and responsibilities? Sure. Hey, Tim. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm a Pizza Inn franchisee. I've been a franchisee with Pizza Inn for a little over 11 years. Um, I've, I have four stores currently, working on a fifth. Hope to get it open here soon. Um, I'm also the president of the Pizza Inn Franchisee Association, so um, I take that responsibility. Um, very, very important in what I do and helping the franchisee um, relate to the franchisor. Um, the association is, uh, the franchise associations have been a, a very important topic. Can you tell us a little bit more about the franchise association? What does it do? What it's, what's its position in, in the business? Yeah, Tim, basically what we do is we represent the franchisee. Um, so if there's an issue with their store that, that the franchisee's doing or, or we actually help make sure that our product is what our product's supposed to be. Um, you know, for a lot of years it was a battle and we spent a lot of time fighting with the franchise. Mm -hmm. Or, um, now we've kind of got on the same side of the table. Um, we've kind of changed our approach um, and to try to find some common ground. Um, and so we, now we've spent a lot of time growing our business, helping the franchisees grow the business instead of figuring out how to pick a fight. There's been a lot of discussion about the rolling out of new technologies uh, in a, into a franchise system. Can you tell us a little bit about your process for doing that? Um, it's always a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, the franchisor is really good at spending our money. Uh, and so, so we have to protect that and we have to kind of reel them back in. Um, and one of the things that we've done at Pizza Inn is, is with the Franchisee Association, mm -hmm. um, we've partnered with Pizza Inn. Um, and so when they bring something to us, um, we communicate about it and we, we, we actually talk to the, to the company. Um, and so we're not just, we're asking the questions from a franchisee standpoint, not just a franchisor standpoint. Um, <clears throat> and through doing that, we've, we've helped them learn, but we've also learned that there is another aspect that the franchisor has to be responsible for. Um, so it's been a good learning approach to both of, for both of us. Um, and we've been able to move forward. And so we actually have a, a series of test stores. Um, and so when we want to roll out a new initiative, um, we, we just went to a rewards program uh, not too long ago. And, and so we picked a group of stores and we said, okay, we're going to try it and see if this works. Um, we had a lot of feedback, a lot of chance to go back and make tweaks to the program. Um, we're actually testing a POS system now. Um, the first test failed, you know, and it was okay. Uh, because it, it, it enabled us to talk franchisee, franchisor, why? Uh, what can we do for you guys to get the information that you need, but also make it work on a store level? Yeah. Um, and so we're in the middle of that test now. And so, so it's been good because it's not being forced on us, but we're, we're working together um, to make sure that the franchisor is getting what they need, but the franchisee is also able to operate and it's a user-friendly system. So when it comes to technology innovation, as a franchisee, you're a very active participant in this, in this whole process, from defining the solution to vetting the solution and to even uh, assessing its, its viability for the system. Yes, sir. Has it always been this case? I mean, it has not. What was it from before and how did you get to where you are now? Uh, you know, it was a lot of uh, the franchise were telling us what we were gonna do. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, as, as a good franchisee, we drag our feet. Uh, <laughs> That's the norm in the industry, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Um, and so then what would happen is there would be a need that, uh, you know, a store would have to do something. They would have to make the jump and, and they, would, they would buy the POS or they would buy the equipment, whatever, um, and it would be a disaster. Um, or we would, you know, listen, as, as the association, we would just say, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go in a different direction. Um, and, it, and it drove a lot of wedges. Um, and, and, you know, and... and Consequently, we lost a lot of stores, wow. um, and you know we saw a lot of good corporate employees um, that that had we been able to work together, we probably would still have them working with us. Um, that we were able to have a good relationship with, but just because of the strained franchisee franchisor relationship, corporate lost a lot of good employees. I think there's probably a lot of systems that actually can relate to that. What was the transition? How did you go from that then to where you are today? Um, you know, we really just, just hit a brick wall on both sides. You know, I mean, we would, we would go to the corporate office to have, have our, our, you know, quarterly meetings. Um, and we would, all of us would literally walk out and feel like we had just been beat up. 
you know, I mean, it was just exhausting, get nothing accomplished. Um, and so we had some leadership change and, and we just decided that we're going to approach this differently. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't have everything. We can't win them all. Mm. Um, and so we just agreed to disagree on a few items and know that they're always going to be there until we're, until they're fixed. Um, but let's just start having some little wins. Mm -hmm. Let's just start seeing some victories, um, to, to build some trust. Um, and so the franchisor and the franchise board both reluctantly went into this. Um, you know, not very optimistic that we were gonna, you know, get a lot done. Um, but fortunately, we did see some small wins mm -hmm. um, and that started building trust. And, and listen, I mean, it's, we're a long way from where we need to be. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's a, uh, it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we, we still mess up. Um, but we just decided to be open about that. We've decided that we're not going to get mad at each other w whenever it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure out why and, and we're going to move forward. As a franchisee, what's, could you help a franchisor understand the, the context of a franchisee? What's, what's important for a franchisor to know about the franchisee's situation? You know, listen, we're, we're concerned about our business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, as we struggle. You know, we struggle with the doubts of, are we doing this right? Are we, do we have the right people in place? Hey, I'm out of town. What in the world's going on in my store because I can't be there? And, and oh, I've got this manager there today and they, they do a good job, but I can't be there to, you know, so we have those doubts. No, we're not going to tell them because, you know, we don't want to show our, our weakness a lot of times, you know, um, but, but it's a struggle for us. You know, just like they have the pressure to make sure that they've got same store sales. Well, we're the same store. You know, we, we've got to keep those sales going too because we got a bank to pay and we got a mortgage to pay for our home and we got kids to pay for. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, it, there's a lot of pressure on us too. Um, you know, and, and whenever we realize that, that we're both in it together mm -hmm. uh, and we know you guys have, you know, a board to answer to or, or you know, owners that, to answer to or a CEO to answer to um, and realize that, hey, you know what, let's do this together. Let, let's, let's walk down the street together. And again, we're not gonna, we're not gonna agree on a lot of things and that's okay, just walk away from those things. Uh, and let's focus on something we can agree on until it gets to the point where you can't ignore it. It's interesting, so, so much of this seems to be the development of trust, but then also a level setting of what proper expectation and what reasonable expectations are. Exactly. As a franchisee, what um, type of support do you look to uh, your franchise order provide? Where are they most helpful to you? Best practices. Mm -hmm. You know, again, we don't expect the franchisor to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in a system that there's a lot of good operators, um, spend some time with them and figure out what's working. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid. One thing that I'm a strong believer in is the only thing constant is change. Yes. Um, and so if we're still trying to use the same manuals and the same recipes that we used 30 years ago, odds are it's not going to work. You know, we have different kitchens, we have different ovens, we have different employees, you know, and, and the employee that we're hiring today is not the same employee we hired 15 years ago. You know, 15 years ago, you could walk in and say, I need you to do this, or you better do this, and it would happen. You do that today and they're gonna say, oh, see you later, I'm gonna go somewhere else and work, you know? And so we're having to find new ways to, wow. to encourage our employees to do the things that we need them to do and when, I, when that franchisor is sharing best practices of what's how did these people get to do it? What did these people um, do to get the motivation to get their folks to work? Um, and, and listen, just helping us, we're really good at, at saying the things that we do wrong, you know? And so sometimes it's just coming in and encouraging. Hey, you know, you're doing great. You know, the, this looks great. And, and, and taking some of our best practices and saying, hey, I'm taking this to the, to the system and share it with with other people, just an encouragement. Um, because it, it, a lot of times it does end up, you know, with their checklist, they come in with their clipboard and, and, or iPad now or whatever and say, okay, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you gotta fix this. Here's your grade, I'll see you, you know, in six months, whatever. Um, and, you know, listen, I understand that they're under a lot of pressure to get a lot of stuff done too, but, you know, sometimes just leave the clipboard in the car. You know, just come in and, and say, hey, how are you? Um, and start building that relationship. Oh, wow. It's not just a technology matter. It's a people matter, Absolutely. too, as well. You've got many dimensions of how to keep a restaurant functional and operational. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about the communication that you have? Uh, it's the source of every relationship, right? <laughs> how does information flow back and forth? How do you communicate with your franchisor? Um, 
you, you know, it, it's, it's tough. It really is tough, um, you know, because a lot of times we, we talk. A lot of times we send an email. A lot of times we, we are talking, but we're not communicating, you know? And, and so what I've challenged um, Pizza Inn to do is, is to learn to communicate. You don't need to talk so much, communicate. Um, you know, because it was, well, we sent an email or we, you know, we, we put it on the, the intranet or we did this. And, and listen, if nobody's following, you're not a leader, you know, and if nobody's listening to you, you're not communicating, you're just talking. Um, and so we're trying some new things um, just to learn to learn how to communicate, um, because that is the basis of pretty much any relationship. Um, but it's the biggest struggle, you know, because it's an inflection in your voice. It's a word that you chose to use or you sent a text message and they're having a bad day and they read it wrong, you know? <laughs> and so it's, it's a challenge. Um, we have done some things with Pizza Inn just um, in, in, through our FBCs, um, through the franchisees, communicating a little better. Um, we've tried, and we've tried a lot of things that have failed. You know, we tried the blog deal on the internet, you know, and there's three people that use it, you know? And, and <laughs> so, so communication is not just talking is figuring out how do you get them to listen. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, there's, there's no silver bullet for that, you know, because each one of us are separate. Each one of us are individuals. And it's just like dealing with our managers. You know, we can't talk to every manager the same way. We have to have the same expectation, but you have to communicate differently so that they hear you. That's the, one of the big challenges of the franchise industry, right? We have some operators that are doing very healthy, and then we have others on the other end of the spectrum that are just barely making it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. If you had that role as franchisor, uh, what would you do differently? How would you more adequately meet the needs of an entire system like uh, with such a wide portfolio? Um, so, so that's, a, that's a tough question. Yeah. But, again, it goes all the way back to relationships. Okay. You know, and, and so many times we put, the franchisor puts an FBC in an area and they put them in a box. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, all, all um, personalities don't mesh, you know? And sometimes just looking at that and going, hey, why don't you, you and, and Joe don't mix. So I'm gonna take you out, out and I'm gonna put Johnny dealing with this franchisee because they have a better relationship. Uh, and, and thinking outside the box and the fact that, well, that's, that's his area and you got to deal with it, you know, um, that they have the right to do that, but they're going to continue to beat their head against the wall with that franchisee because no matter how hard that franchise business consultant tries to communicate, they're not listening. And if you can find somebody that can relate to that person to help them, they're going to go a lot further along in their business is going to make the relationship between franchisee and franchise or better just because of a personality. Oh, um, and so you got, they have to think out, we have to think outside the box as franchisees. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we get our sales raised? How do we continue to, in, to, to help our labor cost? Well, and it's sometimes me as the owner, I can't go and talk to another manager the way that I would like to because I intimidate them. Okay, and so I have to go to another manager and go, okay, listen, let's handle this this way. C can you go talk to them for me and let's get on the same page because they'll listen to you. I can go talk to them, but I'm not communicating. Wow, a small adjustment here could actually dramatically improve the relationship between a franchisee and a franchisor. Managing personalities. And this is gonna be, if you don't manage it well, this is gonna be an ongoing problem continuously. Absolutely. If I could ask also, as an operator, uh, when we think about innovation, uh, it's been such a topic here, what is your perspective? You're the one where the rubber hits the road, you see things that hit the ground. How do you think about innovations and, and, and how it affects your business? I think innovation is crucial. Again, I, I think change is the only thing constant. And if we're not constantly changing, it's going to be tough. Yeah. The challenge that we face is, I love change. Most people don't. Okay. Um, and so, it, again, it's, it's a baby step. Yeah. And as we walk, we gotta know that sometimes we're gonna fall and scrape our knee. Sometimes we're going to, to have to help somebody else up, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and so, as innovation goes, um, you know, it's tough because we're on, we're on tight budgets a lot of times too, you know? Um, and again, kind of going back to what we've done with, with Pizza Inn is, is we partnered with that. Um, to say, okay, um, we're going to pay half of this 
to, and put it in, in this test store, the franchisee will pay half. Or sometimes the franchisor in some situations go, okay, we're gonna pay for all this because we believe in it, but we know you really don't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the rubber meet the road. Uh -huh. um, and then there's been times as franchisees, we go, hey, we wanna do this. And the franchisor goes, eh, I'll support it. But so then we have to decide, is it important enough for us to, uh -huh. to pony our money up to, to say, okay, yeah, this works and this is what's gonna move the ball. And then sometimes bring the franchisor on with us. Um, but we do that with the blessing of the franchisor. Um, you know, now we, we didn't always do that, you know, now. <laughs> and so it's, it's been refreshing that, that we're open to innovation. We're open to the technology. Um, you know, Pete uh, we're celebrating our 60th year this year. Oh, wow. um, and so we have, we still have the original franchisee that, that is still operating the store. Wow. Um, and, and he's not one that's going to jump at technology. He's not one that's going to jump at innovation. Yeah. You know, he's what's been working for him for 58 years, you know. And so it, it's about us franchisees helping the franchisor too, because we trust that the franchisor is going to have our back whenever things go south. Um, they, they're not going to start pointing fingers, but, but it's also the same way, you know. That's actually an interesting point. How do you relate to your other franchisees? It seems like, you know, you would always have far more influence than another, than a message from the franchisor. Is that correct? You know, again, it's personalities. Um, you know, we, we, we have a, 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 a situation going on right now um, that it's really a franchisor responsibility. Um, but because this, this person, this franchisee doesn't trust, doesn't believe in anything the corporate office does, um, what we've decided to do as the association is we said, let us help you. Let us take that on. Um, and so we're working through that and we're seeing some progress. But just flip the coin and we've got a situation to where uh, we've got a franchisee who is bucking the franchise, who, who's bucking the association, but has a great relationship with corporate. And so they're helping us say, look, they're, they're in this with you. They're helping you. These are the things that they're doing. And again, it's because we're not communicating well as an association. Um, and so we're having to learn how to communicate with this franchisee differently. But for whatever reason, he's got a great relationship with his field consultant. And so his field consultant from a corporate side is helping us bridge that relationship. It really seems like uh, flexibility is the key here. Yeah. You're being able to adjust to, to what the situation requirements. It's not going to be a, a one fixed template of everything. You're going to adjust and to your point, it's the personalities that are involved and being able to communicate, not just talk. Yes, sir. Davin, thank you very much thank for taking so the time much. to speaking with us. I appreciate it. I've been speaking with Davin Acker uh, of Pizza Inn, and we're coming to you from the Restaurant Franchise Innovation Summit 2018 in Louisville, Kentucky.